So guys, we all have that one movie, right? That movie that we popped into our VCR and watched on repeat 24 hours a day as kids. Like I'm talking watched it so much that we can vividly remember being awoken at 2 a.m. by the sound of the VHS tape rewinding itself. What was your movie that you did this with? Let me know in the comments below. I had a couple. I had The Breakfast Club, super kid friendly. Just bury your head in the sand and wait for your Prom. The Sandlot. You're killing me, Smalls. Always a classic. But the one I watched the most often is today's flick, Never Been Kissed. Or as Mike Tyson would call it, Never Been Kissed. This movie was so magical and romantic to me as a kid, but the bummer is I recently watched it as an adult and it turns out it aged like an avocado or milk or just picture anything that didn't age well and that's never been kissed. A slightly unique 90s tween rom-com about a young reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times who receives an assignment to pose undercover as a high school student to research contemporary teenage culture. I'm 17. I'm 17. <laughs> Not another teen movie. I remember parodied this movie with this elderly lady. Uh, do either of you know where Mr. Keller's English class is? And while hilarious, I think they made fun of the wrong part. They were kind of making fun of the fact that, you know, Drew Barrymore was posing as a high school student but didn't look young enough to be a high school student, but I disagree. I think she looks pretty young and could maybe pose as a high school student. The weird part that I think everyone kind of glossed over was that whole thing where her 30-year-old teacher fell in love with her when he thought she was only 17. So when you're my age, guys would be lined up around the block for you. Yeah, it's rough, guys. I'm sorry, so buckle up. Put on your feathered boas and let's peel back the layers of the avocado that has never been kissed. Peel the avocado. <gasps> but first, a word from today's sponsor. Don't miss this one, the bird's in it. I found it hilarious. Okay, be right back. Sweet dude. So as you guys know, I often turn to my parrot for life advice. Hey. Not me needing advice again. <laughs> the other day, I really wanted to know, where can I go to deepen my relationship with fragrances? To whom can I turn to express my individuality through fragrance? Is there some type of service that exists that I could try that would let me choose a designer fragrance every month for just $17? And every month I would get to pick which fragrance I wanted so that there was never any surprises? And she was all like, yeah, you should try. So bad. And I was like, oh yeah, duh. They're actually sponsoring this video today. <laughs> How's that for timing? As you guys know, I love Scentbird because they have reimagined everything about how you shop for, discover, and even experience fragrance. They have perfumes, colognes, tons of unisex options. And with each fragrance, you get a 30-day supply. None of those dinky little two-day samples you get elsewhere. So you can really decide if you love a fragrance before committing to a full-size bottle. They carry all the fancy brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, Confessions of a Rebel. Pretty much any brand you want you can find on there. Just ask my parrot. Yeah. Wanna see what I got this month? <laughs> First, we have to talk about the new packaging because it's so stellar. Let's do an old school beauty guru hand behind the product shot. So beautiful. Click to unlock and give her a spray. Wanna switch her out? Go ahead. My favorite one I got this month is Sugarful by Michelle Germain. I love a sweet scent. Not overly sweet, but sweet yet sophisticated. This is perfection. It has hints of wild sweet strawberry and pink peonies spun with delectable pink cotton candy. Ugh. But then there's musk and sandalwood in it, which makes it a little bit more elevated, you know? So this was my fave this month, but also this one surprised me so much from Confessions of a Rebel. It's called B-word, please. <laughs> the reason I am so obsessed with this is because it smells identical to the hotel I stayed at when I went to LA for the Streamy Awards. It was called One Hotel, Most Beautiful Place in the World. This smells exact. I almost spent $120 on a candle there and I don't have to know because I found it in this. Last but not least, this one might be my favorite. They're all my favorite. This is from an indie brand, Skylar. It is called Urban Rose. It's one of the best rose scented scents I've ever scented. Oftentimes rose fragrances can be too, I don't know, not sweet enough basically. And this is very delicate, subtle, sweet, and smells like a rose, which rules because that was my mom's nickname for me when I was little. Rosebud. I love Semper. This is such a baller service. I love being able to try out new fragrances without committing to a huge bottle. And I am obsessed with the beautiful new 
packaging. So chic. So if you guys are interested in trying out Scentbird, you can use my code Jamie French. Be sure to spell my name correctly at checkout for 55% off, which ends up being just a little over $7 for your first month. And it is available in the United States and Canada. So guys, the moral of this story is always listen to your parrot for life advice. Again, friends, use code Jamie French at checkout for 55% off Scentbird. And thanks so much, Scentbird, for sponsoring a portion of today's video and for keeping me smelling delicious. And now back to the show. Okay, kids, we're back. So this movie centers around Drew Barrymore's character, Josie Geller, who is a plain, boring, beige Becky, nobody copy editor with boring clothes and a gross ponytail. Mm. She does have an assistant, though, that I really like named Merkin. Merkin ain't jerkin. He's working. I never realized until right now that his name was Merkin. Also never realized that he has a cow and a sumo wrestler next to a typewriter hanging on the wall of his cubicle. So yay for set design. So Josie works with a ton of other famous people. We got Molly Shannon plays her coworker Anita, Octavia Spencer, John C. Riley plays her boss, <laughs> who doesn't believe that she has what it takes to be a real journalist. You don't think I can grab a bull's balls? No, Josie, I don't think you can grab a bull's balls. That's my Drew Barrymore. You're welcome. So we find out on her lunch break that she has never kissed a guy. Okay, if you've never kissed a guy before, we have bigger problems than the underwear. Have you guys ever seen a more illusory female protagonist in any movie? I don't think I have. I mean, first of all, <laughs> a copy editor? Gross. Second of all, she has a pet turtle. Where do you think it should go? Nah. Third of all, she embroiders heck tons of pillows, has ugly curtains, and has never been kissed. <laughs> I can only imagine how many times she's gonna fall in this movie. So the next day at work, Josie's even bigger boss than John C. Riley, like the head honcho of the Chicago Sun-Times, proposes an idea for an undercover story he wants to put out. My semester in high school. And he randomly chooses Josie uh, to do the story and to go undercover as a high school student without asking her anything about herself and also without telling anybody what the actual story is about. He's like, Josie Gella, you enroll Friday. And there we have the main plot of this movie. So in order to really play the part of a high school student, she needs a different car, so she thinks. <laughs> so she has to borrow her brother's car. So her brother, Rob, is played by David Arquette, who for some reason is one of those actors I just can't take seriously. Not that he plays a serious role in this movie, but still, if he did, I wouldn't believe him. Oh, so she excitedly tells her brother Rob, she's like, you are looking at the newest undercover reporter for the Chicago Sun Times. Super excited, right? This is her dream, what she's always wanted. And he uh, reigns all over her braid and reminds her how big of a loser she is. Do you remember what they called you in high school? Josie, 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 Josie. Josie Grossy. That's right, friends. Not only is she a big boring loser as an adult, but she was also a loser in high school. So losery, in fact, that they called her Josie Grossy. <laughs> so she gets super discouraged. Way to go, Rob. She has to go into the bathroom at his work at the Tiki Post, you know, and uh, throw up and put her bare hands all over the toilet seat where people's butts go. And in this gross Tiki bathroom stall is where we get our first flashback. Back to 1987 when Josie was Josie Grossy and all the kids were mean and poured Sprite into her backpack, which is extra mean if you ask me, seeing as she carried her toilet paper in her backpack like every high school student does. Now it's gonna be all soggy. And we meet the guy that she was in love with in high school and that she frequently reminisces about Billy Prince. Hi, Billy. Who has a sick denim jacket, beautiful cheekbones, and not a compassionate or decent bone in his 27 year old body. <laughs> so guys, it's time for Josie Grossy to become Josie, not Grossy. And she gets a full blown makeover that we don't get to see. Oh my, I never realized this. There's no like obnoxious eyebrow plucking scene, no trying on different outfits scene, no salon scenes where the protagonist models different looks and the supporting best friends give thumbs up and thumbs down. There's nothing. She just shows up to school the next day with new hair and a weird outfit, an ugly car and weird like gray blue foundation all over her lips. It's not a good look. They made her look so like almost sickly before she gets her real glow up. This is like the pre-glow up glow up, but they always, her lips look blue and her eyelids look kind of red and I don't, 
understand. First day of school goes horribly, as you probably remember if you've seen this movie, she's an instant loser. The two popular girls, actually there's three, but we only meet two at first. These two popular girls played by Jessica Alba and um, who's the other? It's not Heather Graham. That other girl that kind of looks like Heather Graham. Okay. Instantly make fun of her. Five chickens had to die just so she could look that stupid. That was my favorite quote in the whole movie. The teacher makes her wear this dorky sombrero for being tardy and she has to get up in front of the class to, you know, introduce herself and it was so ridiculous. I never realized it as a kid. She does that thing in movies where the character is trying to tell some sort of lie, but they're terrible at it. So they just come up with details of the lie based on what they see in the room. George what? Georgia. Tropicana. <laughs> I hate that. We were sheep, sheep farmers. My family raised sheep. As if an undercover journalist wouldn't have had an entire backstory prepared. Sure, Jan. Although, to be fair, I forgot about this part. She did get distracted when this guy, Guy, walked in. As in, his name is Guy. I'm Guy. So Guy is like the modern day equivalent of Billy. He reminds her of Billy from the past. And at times, uh, things between Guy and Josie get a bit creepy. You rock my world. Please keep in mind that she's playing a character who's 25, yeah, 25. I'm 25 years old! So then we meet Josie's other teacher, Sam Coulson. Uh, the school has this thing about letting you guys call me Sam. Yeah, that checks out, because you're their teacher. We meet even more characters in uh, Shakespeare class. We got the token stupid girl. Does anyone know what that means? Parakeet? And also this girl, Aldis, who is also a loser and therefore is super nice to Josie and befriends her immediately. We stand losery besties. <laughs> so Josie ends up answering a question that Mr. Coulson poses and because she is so well-spoken on the topic of Shakespeare, Mr. Coulson immediately <laughs> develops a suspicion. Are you sure you're 17? Because obviously no actual 17 year old would be able to give an intelligent answer in Shakespeare class. So many things weird about this question. First of all, what teacher would ask that in front of the entire class? If you were really suspicious that your student was 25 years old, seems like maybe you'd pull him aside after class. I don't know, it's just me. Second of all, why did he ask if she was sure? Are you sure you're 17? Yes. I'm 17. I'm 17. <laughs> what would you expect her to say to that? I know what I would have said. Are you sure you're 17? Uh, yeah. I'm 17. Are you sure you want to be flirting with me? So later on at lunch, this irked me a little bit. Josie immediately goes to just sit with the popular kids. Like hasn't been there for more than a few hours, has not earned any cool points and just thinks she can sit with Kirsten, Kirsten and Gibby. It doesn't go well. Oh, but I also thought it was so silly because she immediately starts interviewing them. Like literally gets out a notebook, pen and paper to interview them. Another thing I didn't really pay attention to as a kid. Like what are you guys' hopes and dreams? Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. Every new high school kid interviews their peers about their hopes and dreams. You definitely don't seem like a journalist. No one would make that connection. So Guy comes up, remember Guy from earlier? And she just, she's so infatuated with this uh, 17 year old boy that she completely fumbles over her words and makes a fool of herself. Yikes. <laughs> Bikes. <laughs> Are you in special ed? Yet another thing that didn't exactly age well, her kind of infatuation with Guy. Never thought twice about it as a kid, but now uh, it raises my eyebrows. See? See how raised they are? That's how you know. How are you at calculus? I'm good. How would you like to join the denominators? Come on, Josie, you can't join the denominators. Can't join mathletes, it's social suicide. This montage of Josie being in the mathletes, or not the mathletes, that's mean girls, the denominators, is the mathiest montage I have ever seen. Look at this, they stand in the hallway with their calculator. And they have bake sales with pie on the banner. That's actually kind of clever but still a little excessive. They compete with other schools. I mean, how much more math can we squeeze into this montage? Shouldn't there be a limit on how much math can be in a math montage? The limit does not exist. Also, this is neither here nor there, but Josie is always biting her lip and making like super dorky faces. And I actually think it's so good and funny. <laughs> like you can tell Drew Barrymore maybe has a bit of an inner nerd, an innerd, if you will. A little Josie Grossy deep inside. Right in here. Alongside of those weird uh, 
salad suckers Drew Barrymore eats. With every lick, you're basically getting a bite of a salad. Speaking of salad suckers, I'm starving. I gotta take a break. Be right back, and when we come back, a poem. See you there. <laughs> Does he notice me? Does he hear my heart screaming his name? His voice is so mellifluous. I could just get one kiss. Again, these flashbacks and these facial expressions are next level good. I fully believe, I believe so hard that Josie Grossy was gross. So in this particular flashback, we find out that when Josie was grossy, that guy she was in love with, Billy, actually asked her to the prom. So her best friend like ambushes her in the library and she's like, what have you wanted for like ever? But I mean, never ever thought it would happen. I'm the most popular girl in school and Billy Prince is asking me to the prom. <laughs> yes. What? Billy Prince is asking you to the prom. The poem. I knew he liked the poem. Yeah, it's the poem. High school guys love when desperate losers read stalker level poetry to them in front of the entire class. I know from experience. So her and her friend are absolutely thrilled, which if you've seen this movie, you know, it breaks my black little heart. Back to present day, the kids of South Glen South find out that the theme of their prom is going to be the millennia. Which is so funny. Do you guys remember the Y2K days? <laughs> which was basically just the year 1999 when Y2K was approaching and everybody was freaking out and my friend's parents had a Y2K cabinet because they thought the world was gonna end. <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, so Guy, you know Guy from earlier, he is super excited. Rufus! The prom is going to be Rufus. What's Rufus? It's my new cool hip word. Guy, stop trying to make Rufus happen, okay? It's not going to happen, actually. Yes, it is. That word rules and I'm totally gonna bring it back right now. Also, James Franco is in this scene. He has no lines, he just... <laughs> choose gum. So one night, Josie and Aldis drive past the court, which is just this patch of concrete where all the popular kids hang out. And we actually finally get to see Guy's true colors. How about the dog park is that way? Go. Yeah, they call Aldis Alpo, I guess, because her name starts with Al, and they think she is dog food. Alpo. 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 <laughs> That's the worst pun ever. It's not even a pun. But anywho, the point is, it never dawned on me as a kid watching this that Guy is a literal terrible guy. A big, massive jerk. A big, dumb moron. And Drew Barrymore, like I said, ends up being kind of obsessed with him for a little bit. So now it's not only gross, it's bizarre. Right? Yes. So Josie ends up writing this little story about the court. The court? You know, the patch of concrete we talked about earlier. <laughs> and in this little mini story, she quotes Kristen, the cool girl that she interviewed at the lunch table. Wouldn't that immediately blow her cover? 17 year old Kristen Davis says, yeah, everyone who's anyone is at the court. So let me get this straight, Kristen. A new girl comes to your school, randomly interviews you with a pen and paper at lunch. Then suddenly an article comes out in the Chicago Sun Times, which quotes you and you don't put two and two together? Plot hole. My hands are tied, it's out of my hand, it's a plot hole. So Gus uh, hates her story and tells her that she needs to become friends with the cool kids because this is where the stories are. So Josie Grossy has to become Josie Cooley. And as we all know, she's incredibly uncool, okay? She wears sweaters and corrects people's grammar constantly throughout this movie. Hopefully it's an adverb. So she's kind of venting about this to her brother, Rob. What? Damn, we got some underage hotties on our hands. Oh, and Rob being, you know, the supportive brother that he is, really hypes her up. He's like, you're smart, you're successful. You wash your hair now. He gives her a motivational speech to help her realize that she can take on the cool kids and become popular. I'm not Josie Grossy anymore! So the next day she is armed and ready with some cool clothes, <laughs> which in my opinion could not possibly be more mm -hmm. uh, poorly matched together. But anyway, on her way into school, she gets stopped by someone who works for the Chicago Sun-Times. I guess he's like the tech guy, George. Welcome to the love shack. And he places a hidden camera onto her cardigan so that her boss and coworkers can kind of monitor her footage and help her come up with her story. I review the tapes, I find your story. Again, so weird to me that they sent her into the field with absolutely zero idea on a story, not a shred of an idea about what the story should be. Is that how journalism really works? But anyway, this hidden camera they give her is- Wings, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, their wings, like as in a pin that a flight attendant would wear. You guys couldn't come up with anything cooler than a flight attendant pin. Great. Despite my annoyances with their choice of pin, I actually thought this whole thing was kind of a fun, clever element to add to the story with, you know, all her friends and coworkers watching all of it. Ooh, they didn't look that good when I went to high school. Ichu. Ichu Jorge. Houston, Kristen Gibby. What's up, girlfriend? Well, finally! I thought she would never make it into the female protagonist's fall compilation, but she did. So Josie has like a mathletes or <laughs> denominators event to go to that night, but she skips out on it in order to go see this Rufalicious band play. And as she's, you know, bobbing through the crowd uh, nerdily, she bumps into her teacher, Mr. Coulson, and his girlfriend. Josie's one of my students. If this were realistic, I feel like this doesn't happen. You know what I mean? I just feel like a teacher wouldn't stay at a bar drinking with his girlfriend while all his students were there <laughs> partying. I don't know. As usual, I don't know most things. So she goes to sit with these guys who are smoking the reefer and they give her a brownie So she gets super stoked and gets on her new friend's nerves Man, I don't love her and then dances on stage with the Rufalicious band in front of everybody Including her teacher and his girlfriend and Merkin and George and everybody who's watching her from her wing pin And I think she kind of thought she had become cool from that one weird dance I, I thought she was gonna be cool too. I mean, she did do the splits. I can't do the splits. But she ends up accidentally falling asleep on her hand stamp and wakes up the next morning with the word loser plastered on her forehead. She didn't look in the mirror before she went to school, not in her house nor in the car. So despite her extremely cool performance the night before, she is still a loser. loser. Oh look, another high school movie character wearing something that would literally never fly at literally any high school. Shocking. Hello? Yes! God, why do they bleach her eyebrows? I just realized that's what's throwing me off about her makeup in this movie. It's the bleached eyebrows. Oh my God. Howie, <laughs> use a makeup wipe. So guys, I know I'm doing the thing I used to do when I first started reviewing movies where I would include way too much detail, but it's all necessary, okay? Some of th this movie doesn't have a lot of filler scenes. It's like everything is either necessary or hilarious to talk about. But anyway, we get another flashback to 1980 something. It was 1980 something. Josie Grossy is about to go to prom with Silly Billy, looking like a beautiful pink, uh, trash bag. So weird that they didn't show any of the flashback of him actually asking her, right? I wonder if that's like a scene that got cut for time. But anyway, Billy pulls up in his limo and just watch. I really want to crack some sort of excellent joke right now, but I can't. This part actually rips my heart out. How could you, Billy? Gosh, Drew Barrymore is such a good actor. I really feel like crying. Same. This is almost as bad as that time I watched Our Planet. Maybe Flamingo that got stranded. <laughs> so upset! So the loser stamp has obviously brought up horrible memories, understandably so, and she's like, you know what, forget this, and she starts running out of the school, but gets yeeted by none other than her brother, Rob. I just registered. Okay, so Rob enrolled at the school. I guess he had like a really great baseball career going for him when he was a teenager, but it got ruined because he got mono. You had such a shot at playing college ball. Let one case of mono stop you. So he's wanting a second chance to play high school ball and possibly have it lead to getting picked up by a pro team who will hopefully ignore the fact that he illegally enrolled in high school for a second time as a 23 year old. Uh, and he also feels like he can be of help to Josie because he he is cool and therefore she can become cool by association. He can help her out. It's a win-win. You can't just come in here and be popular in just one day. Rub, rub, rub. <laughs> I don't believe that eating a bucket of coleslaw could make someone cool, okay? Because when I tried it in high school, people were just mad. They were like, hey, do that somewhere else, fatty. You you smell like mayonnaise. I, 
smell like an egg salad sandwich. But no, when Rob does it, it's so cool and so hot. And it makes 16 year old girls wanna come up and be his girlfriend, even when he's literally covered in slaw, his whole face. So slawy. It's time for a short air break and when we come back, the avocado that is this movie turns crazy brown. See you there. Hey kids, we're back. And it's time for the prom carnival fundraiser thing. Josie's there looking to ride the Ferris wheel alone, but uh, instead her teacher joins her. Honest to goodness, guys, I hate to be a Karen. I'm not a Karen, you know? I don't enjoy being one, but this is weird. <laughs> he believes this to be his 17 year old student and he just starts telling her about his personal life. I'm going out for five years and now she wants me to move to New York. You know, I mean, I should, I should do it. You know, make the commitment and grow up. Hey. You shouldn't be talking about that stuff with her. You know what? I sh shouldn't be talking about this stuff with you. Excuse you? I just said that. This gets wildly inappropriate. All I can tell you is that when you're my age, guys will be lined up around the block for you. Actually, I shouldn't say that because I'm your teacher. Yeah, and we just, all of us, all of us like 10 to 13 year olds watching this were like, yes, Mr. Colson's so hot. I hope they fall in love. Mr. Colson rocks my world. It turns out he was a bit of a creep. A bit of a weirdo. What the heck is he doing here? On the Ferris wheel, he don't belong here. He's got an ugly shirt. So the pace of the movie finally slows a tad. Rob starts spreading these rumors, like good rumors, you know, to make Josie seem cool, such as the one where he says that her dad invented x -Lex. Did you guys know that Josie's dad invented that stuff? X -lax. That would make anyone cool in my book. It's true. Rob's killing it on the baseball team. Anita shows up to the school to say hi to Josie, but accidentally gets mistaken for the said guest speaker. She's gonna lead us in our discussion. What? Molly Shannon's delivery during this scene is so spot on and hilarious, but I am gonna gloss over it because we are family friendly here on this channel, but I'm sure you all remember how this scene went. But I do need to include the part where an announcement comes through the loudspeaker that unfortunately South Glen South High's rival school, East Glen East, is also doing the millennium for their prom theme. <laughs> Which shouldn't matter at all because it's a different school, but it does. And everybody loses their minds until- All right, Josie. Yeah, guy heard one rumor from Rob that Josie used to date the drummer of some band called the Big Bad Voodoo Daddies, and now he assumes that she is a prom theme guru. Okay, Josie will have the answer. So her idea is meant, meant for, for each, each other. other. Famous, Famous couples, couples throughout history. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Now Josie's amazing at coming up with things on the spot under pressure while everyone's staring at her. She's come a long way since the sheep farmers incident. Sheep farmers. So one night there's a fat party at Rob's, which is actually Rob and Josie's parents' house because <laughs> Rob still lives with his parents. And we find out that 23 year old Rob is gonna take a 16 year old girl to prom. Hi guys. <laughs> Rob's prom date. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. 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 She's 16 years old, Rob. I know, and a gymnast. Gross. So a guy comes up and he's like, I gotta talk to you. And takes her up to, I guess, what was her <laughs> childhood room. Rob's sister is a loser. Anyway, he asks her to prom and she says, Yes. Because she's super into guys who bully her friends. The dog park is that way. Yum. You can't refuse to sell me a ticket to prom. Listen out, Paul. We can do whatever we want to. Oh my God, I'll like make it easy, okay? Here's the money. I'm taking the ticket. Did you see that? You gotta make her dog food, seriously. Yeah, man. Make her dog food. So back at work at the newspaper, Gus tells Josie that he wants her to do a story on Mr. Coulson. He is your story. He thinks an expose on student-teacher relations would be incredibly riveting. Student-teacher relations, how close is too close? I agree that such a story would probably blow up and a lot of people would be talking about it. It would probably have ruined Mr. Coulson's career or at the very least his reputation. So of course Josie doesn't want to do it, but Gus is like, you have to. This is the story. Run along, go make out with your teacher, and then come back and write a beautiful, beautiful story about it. Call me when you've got it. Okay. So it's the night of the prom. Getting stressed out. Josie goes as Rosalind from Shakespeare. Uh, Rob goes pantless. That's nice. Guy pulls up to pick Josie up in a limo and they make you think he's gonna chuck an egg at her, but it's just a beautiful white rose, which means friendship. Come on, beautiful. 
Let's go. So they get to the prom and it's a high school movie prom. So it's incredibly <laughs> extravagant and looks like the school had a budget of like $500,000. There's an ice sculpture. Oh my God. Why do you have a banana? Uh, the whole team at the Chicago Sun-Times is watching via Josie's body cam footage, which again, I thought was so fun. The writers actually did a pretty good job with this movie of making you almost forget how gross some of it is. All these and the other nerds show up dressed as DNA. <laughs> A bunch of nerds. <laughs> they announce the prom court. Okay, so the cool girls win as princesses and the cool guys win as princes. And it just killed me because <laughs> they don't know Rob's last name. And Mr. Rob. Mr. Rob. Yeah. Mr. Rob! So Rob was able to enroll at this school with no last name. Sorry guys, that's a plot hole. I'm sorry. Did you say something negative about this film? You're actually not allowed to say anything about this film because I liked it as a kid. Trish, why are you defending this movie, okay? It didn't age well, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> let me be clear. Um, I liked this movie as a child and therefore it doesn't matter. I loved it too, but it didn't age well. <laughs> See, guys, it didn't age well. See, Trish, oh. So as you guys probably could have predicted, Guy and Josie win prom king and queen. Josie Geller. Yay! Yay! So naturally, as prom queens do, she uh, slow dances with her male teacher. Do you wanna? Do you wanna? With straight up held hands while he tells her more about his personal relationship. We we broke up last week. Really? How am I supposed to feel? Okay, yeah, her character's 25, but he doesn't know that. He thinks she's 17. You're amazing, Jesse Geller. Gross. There's something that I want to tell you. There's something I want to tell you too. Yeah, so I guess they're about to come clean to each other, confess their love, you know? She was probably gonna come clean about being an undercover reporter. He was most likely gonna confess his love to what he thinks is his 17 year old high school student. But they get interrupted because Josie notices that the cool kids are about to dump some dog food on her friend. No! No! <laughs> Ew, it got in Gibby's mouth. Good God, this scene is actually a little bit more intense than I remember. You so do not deserve to be prom queen! <laughs> Jessica Alba went so hard on that line. <laughs> anyway, Josie confesses everything. She blows her cover. I don't care about being your stupid prom queen. I'm 25 years old. I'm an undercover reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times. I'm not exactly sure watching this as an adult why she did that. Why did she blow her cover and risk her job? Why not just be like, yeah, I didn't want you dumping dog food on my friend. Even if she is dressed like she's late for a blue man group show. <laughs> she also blows Rob's cover in the process. The next day. Hey. It's next day. My brother. Rob posed as a student and told you to like me. Rob is ticked. He's like, gee, thanks, Josie. Thanks for ruining my date with this 16 year old. She gives a very tween movie-esque motivational speech. She's like, there's a big, big world out there. Find out who you are and try not to be afraid of it. And just like that, she was cool again. Woo! And all she had to do was blast the popular girls in the mouths with Dog food. Hello? We lost the feed. Gus is going nuts. Please tell me you got something on Colson. No. Yeah, thanks, George. Okay, so the cat is out of the bag, obviously, and Josie goes up to Sam and she's like, Surprise. Surprise what? You were doing a story on me? Surprise, I was hoping. What? You were hoping. What, what, that I'd, that I'd be happy? Why, Why because it turns, turns out all of a sudden I was allowed to be attracted to you? You should have just not been. So he's out, you know, he's hurt, he's done so. He tells her every word out of her mouth has been a lie. I just can't look at you the same way. You, you mean you can't look at her the same as you could when you thought she was only 17? Because, Chris. How could you do this to me? 
I helped you. I got you everything you wanted. How could you embarrass me, man, in front of my 16-year-old girlfriend? She said I was her penguin. My penguin. I actually never realized how many times they say the word penguin in this movie. Penguins. 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 Penguin. Penguin. So even though Josie has screwed everything up and ruined everybody's lives, she decides that she is still going to publish a story. But we will have a story, okay? You will have an amazing story. It's a very emotional story. She kind of writes about her life growing up as the kid geek to the core. A geek to the core. Most of my childhood years were spent doing extra homework. Who, you know, got asked to the prom as a cruel joke by Bully Billy. Billy Bolly. And she says that she's never fully recovered from that. Yes, it is embarrassing to share this with the world, but it would be hard to explain what I learned without sharing this humiliating history. And she says, I received an assignment to go back to high school and I realized high school hasn't changed. There's still that one super weird teacher. There's still those super mean bimbos that everybody hates, but they are somehow convinced that everyone loves them. The smart kids, who everyone knew as the brains, but I knew them as my soulmates. And there's still that one guy with his mysterious confidence who seems so perfect in every way. Does he though? Why don't you go home? How does she still have anything nice to say about this guy? Guy. This guy, guy. Quite a guy. So she goes on to explain in the story that she regrets so much about her first high school experience, but when it comes to her second high school experience, her regrets are down to just one. A certain teacher was hurt on my path to self-discovery. Yeah, a certain teacher who fell in love with me when he thought I was only 17 got his feelings hurt when he thought maybe I was gonna publish a story telling everybody in the world that he was a creep. And also, I think I am in love with you. Oh, cool! So she proposes in her story that as an ending to this article and possibly the beginning of a new chapter of life, that she, Josie Geller, will be at the state championship baseball game where her friends, the South Glen Rams, are playing for the title. I will stand on the pitcher's mound for the five minutes prior to the first pitch. And if this certain creeper, I mean teacher, accepts her apology, then she asks him to come kiss her. My first real kiss. So everybody in Chicago reads this story. So many people show up to support her. There's other reporters like from other newspapers there. Rickford, like the head honcho of the Chicago Sun-Times, he shows up. Everybody's there to support her because they were so moved by this romantic story. There's so many people here. So it's time for the big climax, you guys. Will Sam? forgive her? I was on the absolute edge of my seat watching this as a kid. They tease you so hard too when they show Sam like packing up his apartment because he decided to move to New York with his girlfriend and he almost sees her story in the newspaper but gets distracted when movers knock on his door. Thanks. Movers, hang on a second. It's riveting. You don't know if he's gonna come and he doesn't. He doesn't forgive her. This scene went on entirely too long. I mean, so long that I had to include my own sad copyright-free music so that this didn't get copyright claimed by whoever made this film because it is that long. But wait, what's that? What's that ruckus? Gotcha. Can you guys imagine if he actually didn't forgive her and he never showed up <laughs> and just like went back to his girlfriend from earlier? What a killer song choice. It almost makes me like this part. Am I allowed to like this part? No! No! I feel weird. It's the director's fault if I do like this part. It's actually the director's fault, Andrew Barrymore's fault, if I like this part. I can't be blamed. So the movie, of course, ends with them kissing. <laughs> Anita and Gus kiss. Merkin kisses someone. <laughs> Jessica Alba and the guy with the weird eye kiss. Kristen and Jace. Oh, no, she had some other purse. Twice. The editors were asleep. But anyway, everything works out for everybody. Rob gets to be the baseball coach and Guy ends up alone. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to be you, guy. You little mean, little Hollister model looking bully. <sighs> okay. 
is over, let us find the budget. So the budget on IMDb was an estimated $25 million hairs. Gross income worldwide was 84,565,230. I am actually shocked at how many bad reviews this movie had, like tons of one star, tons of two star. I've learned that this type of thing is kind of unpredictable. A lot of times when I think people are gonna hate a movie, everyone loves it and vice versa. So my opinion is uh, basically wrong, but a lot of people hated this. This review comes from an IMDb user named Brew Swain. Hilarious. His review is entitled, So... We're just gonna ignore the fact that the teacher was totally gonna pursue an intimate relationship with a female student he believed to be a minor? <laughs> No, Brew Swain, we're not gonna ignore that. It's kind of my thing <laughs> to make fun of stuff like that. Anyway, guys, my overall review is that I, I just don't know how to feel, you know? I love Drew Barrymore so much and I, it's hard for me to unlove this movie because it's so nostalgic for me, like I told you. This was a big comfort for me when I was growing up, but it didn't age well. Like no matter how hard I tried to not look at Sam's character as creepy, I, he just, he is. He was, he was. It could have been worse though, right? It could have been worse. At least she was 25. Her character was 25. It could have been like a blank check situation. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, it's so much worse than I remember. Remember that Disney movie? <laughs> Anyway, it is time for me to go. I have to go uh, bleach my eyebrows. Join me on Patreon if you wanna see behind the scenes footage from today's green screen shoot. Don't forget to follow my other social accounts for other types of content and also, thanks again Sunbird for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And I will see you guys in the next one. <sighs>